Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Another gospel that will teach you that there's significance in the cross. Another gospel that will teach you that Christ came and died for all nations. It, it deceives you. Because the simplicity of words when the Lord says he came to preach the gospel of good news to the captive. In order to be captive, there must be a captor. Right. But because you've been deceived by another gospel, your mind will reject common sense and says everybody's captive. Right. That makes no sense. If there's a captive, there must be a captor. Right. If you're being delivered, somebody must be holding you hostage to be delivered from. Right. This is basic common sense. Give me 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. Bring it Let's up. do it. Let's go. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, just as the serpent or Satan tricked Eve into what? Disobeying God's law. Come on. Through his subtility. Through his what? Through his subtility. You know what subtility means, bro? I want you to pay attention because this is very important. Important for all of you. Okay? It says through his subtility. What is subtility going into? What's your name again, bro? Junior. Julian? Ju junior. Junior, Junior. What does subtility mean? What do you think it means? Hell. What you think it means, brother? With the headphones? What's that on your hat? I can't, I can't, Coca-Cola hat. What does subtility mean? Subtility. It says through his, sub read it one more time so we can get the content. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve. So he's giving a comparison. Just as the serpent, he's going all the way back to Genesis, just as the serpent beguiled Eve or tricked or deceived Eve, come on, through his subtility. So there was a tool that he did it through subtility. What does the subtility mean? What does subtility mean? Subtility is going to deceive, trickery. It's, it's obscuring. It's very um, endearing. It sounds good, it's painted as something that's nice like a lamb, but really it's evil, it's subtle. Come on. So, your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So that our minds should be corrupted by the simplicity in Christ. For example, one simple information, one simple thing in Christ is that Christ is a black man. That's a simple thing to understand. I just told you, Pope Alexander VI, hired Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. He commissioned them to paint his son, his illegitimate son, Caesar Borgia, as the new Jesus Christ during the Renaissance period of 1492. And through that is how they conquered the earth, the world. Renaissance means rebirth. Rebirth of what? The Roman Empire or the white man's rule. That's what it's talking about. So read that part again about the subtility. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Don't go nowhere, Junior. Junior, Junior, don't go nowhere. So it says that our minds should be corrupted by the things that are simple in Christ. One simple thing is that Christ is a black man. And we can prove that in the Bible, right? But the world actually believes that, majority of the world, I would say, believes that this right here is Jesus Christ. And if we to ask them to prove it, what's the first thing they're going to say? Oh, it don't even matter. Why that even matter? But wait, you just believe that that was really Christ. That's a lie. If they're going to teach you, if they're going to lie about how Christ looked, what else do you think they lied to you about? Right. We were slaves. They came to make money off of our backs to build a kingdom on this side of the world. You think they're going to give you anything valuable for you to uplift yourself or to overcome them? That makes no sense. Right? So it says it's to corrupt our minds. Come on. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, didn't Christ just speak about that? He just warned us about that in Matthew, the 24th chapter, verses 4 and 5. He you said, know. for if any come and preach another Jesus, because Paul knew that another man was going to come and preach another Jesus. Right. This is another Jesus. Right. Come on. 
whom we have not preached. Whom we have not preached. The apostles never preached a white Jesus. You had another question? How's wearing a cross a dollar shoe? I'm going to show you that. Excellent. I'm going to tie that right into this. Read that last part one more time. Whom we have not preached. Uh -huh. So the apostles, which are black men, they did not preach a white Jesus. Come on. <clears throat> or if you receive another spirit. Another what? Another spirit. Or if you receive another spirit, another psychology, a way of thinking concerning this Bible, it's going to come with another Jesus. So when somebody teaches another Jesus, guess what else comes behind it? Another spirit. That's Not right. the Holy Spirit, another spirit. But they're going through their subtility, they're going to call it the Holy Spirit. Right. Come on. Which ye have not received. Which we have, which the apostles have never taught or were, were able to receive. Come on. Or another gospel. Or another what? Or another gospel. Or another gospel that will teach you that there's significance in the cross. Another gospel that will teach you that Christ came and died for all nations. It, it deceives you. Because the simplicity of words when the Lord says he came to preach the gospel of good news to the captive... In order to be captive, there must be a captor. Right. But because you've been deceived by another gospel, your mind will reject common sense and says, everybody's captive. Right. That makes no sense. If there's a captive, there must be a captor. Right. If you're being delivered, somebody must be holding you hostage to be delivered from. Right. This is basic common sense. Right. You got another question. When I say people are in bondage, I mean the way of thinking. The way yeah, they think. that's a part of it too. But God is, give me, give me Luke 1 and 68. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you it's more than that. I'm going to show you exactly out of Christ's mouth because you believe in Jesus, right? right. Watch this. And then I want her back to 218. And I ain't forget about you. I'm waiting. That's what you I'm said Luke waiting 1 and 68. So we go in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 68. You say I believe in Jesus, right? What does Jesus say? Well, watch this, watch this. What did John, father, John the Baptist's father say concerning Christ? Come on. Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. God of who? God of Israel. What did that say? God of Israel. God of Israel. Why didn't it say all people? Bring it out. We in the New Testament. Right. Think about it. Now we have to start understanding and examining what we've heard in our lives versus what we're reading. Why here in the New Testament he will say, blessed be the God of Israel? Why would he say, blessed be the God of all nations? I still believe that that's his chosen people, but I still believe he died for everybody. Though. Okay, come on. For he had visited and redeemed his people. He have what? Visited and redeemed his people. Notice it said he visited and redeemed his people. That's right. You know what's heavy about that? Because the officer read earlier in Deuteronomy 28 and 40, no, Deuteronomy 28 and 68, where it says, We shall be sold unto our enemies, yet no man shall buy us. And then he went to Leviticus 25 and 47 to explain what that buy means, right? Being Meaning to be redeemed. No man shall save you. But there is a man that is prophesied to redeem or buy them back from captivity. Which is Jesus. But who, read that last part again. Who, for he had visited and redeemed his people. All people. His people. All nations. His people. It says his people. Jesus. That's possessive. That's what we're reading. What I'm trying to show you is what we're reading is different than what you believe or were right. taught to believe. Right. Come on. And hath raised up in the horn of salvation. For us in the house of his servant David. Because Christ came through the lineage of King David. He came through the lineage of the kings. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. So this was ordained ever since the world began. Before Genesis 1. Come on. That we should be saved. That we should be saved. We should be saved. Come on. From our enemies. So everybody's not going to be saved. Right, There's right. a people to be saved from another people which are called enemies. Jesus. Can you understand that? Right. Come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. Who did he come to deliver us from? Deuteronomy 28 verse 48. Bring it out. 
Deuteronomy 28 verse 48 because it says he came to deliver us from the hand of our enemies and they that hate us. Who did God call our enemies by the prophets which was ordained since the world began? Let's get it back in the law. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy. Who? Thine enemy. The enemies or the hand of them that hate you. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee Read. in hunger Read. and in thirst Read. and in nakedness Read. and in want of all things. Read. And he, and he, that same enemy and that man that hates you, come on, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck Read. until he hath destroyed thee. Who put the yoke of iron upon the blacks and Hispanics' necks? The white man did it. Right. Jesus Christ, a black king, is coming to deliver you from the white man. That's what the Bible teaches. That is the gospel. You cannot come for, like let's say, for example, if somebody kidnaps your child, right? Let's say you got children. Somebody steals your children from you, and they hold them hostage. And you call the police, the authorities, and they come to deliver your child. Are they coming to save the child and the person that stole them? Think about it. If you have a kidnapper who steals your daughter and locks them up in a basement and feeds them porridge, right? And does whatever they want with them. And you call the authorities and they find out where your child is. Are they coming to save that person that stole your child, or are they coming to save your child from the thief? The child. They coming to save the child from the thief, right? That's exactly what's going on. Give me Exodus 21. Come on, Exodus 21 and 16. Quick. That's what the Bible's teaching that the gospel is. What is the nation? <laughs> Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.